Welcome to Season 8, Episode 1 of a show I like to call Walking Through Donkey Bay with Interior Designers. How are you? Very well, thank you. What Very is your well. name? Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Patrick Crawshaw. You're an awesome dude. Thank Let's you. go through your creation here. I've stayed here only one night, and I'm so impressed. Can I just say that when I first came here, that um, this tunnel sort of represented Alice in Wonderland, in a way. Oh. And it's like going down a rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. And so that was a bit of the inspiration, well, that was a lot of the inspiration for the Alice in Wonderland, Salvador Dali, sort of surreal. Um, that now that you say that, it makes a lot of sense. Design that it took upon, you know, that took upon, you know, it, that it became... And so it is like going into, uh, down a rabbit hole in those, and it's, it, it plays that really clever architectural uh, clever idea of constricting you mm. and then opening up the space and then constricting the space and opening it up oh, again. So smart. it has this effect on, on your, the way you feel when you pull people into a tiny space and then take them to a, a large open space. That's true, because you do feel like, especially when we go inside, you feel like you're in a, a fantasy world. Like you're in a dream. Yeah, that's the like idea. Like a living, waking that, dream. That you, I wanted to create um, a, a place that you came to stay yeah. where you felt that you'd, you'd woken from a dream. Right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of waking from a dream, welcome. Uh, this is David Maxwell, your amazing half-brother, my friend I like to call it the perfect human homo erectus. <laughs> you can How are you doing? Right. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Dave, what's the name of this place? Uh, this is Donkey Bay, yeah. designed by Patrick, of course. But... Thank you for being here. <laughs> if you guys want to go to places like this, just look at the links down below. Eighth Wonder Travel. It's all because of Dave. Hi, everyone. It's all because of your brother I met you. Yes, quite. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay, let's it's walk all around. Connect, all connected. It's all connected. Yeah. I'm going to ask you some questions. Yes. Would you gents like a drink? There's some kombucha in the Oh, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Chardonnay yeah. for you. I'll have kombucha and then Chardonnay. Okay. Not combined. Not combined. That, that would <laughs> be weird. Um, yeah, so, so I have lots of dumb questions about interior design. Mm -hmm. I hope it's okay if I ask you. Of course. Fire away. So, do you, no, you go. I was going to say, where, where do you find stuff like this? If you want to get like three theater seats and put them in the lobby. Well, I suppose that the thing about design is it, it's, it's about uh, travel and it's about... Uh, so I've spent my whole life... Just looking. When I travel, I always look for things that I can, I, I might find, uh, I might work in a design. And they have these lives that eventually end up in a place where they might come back to me, or I buy them and I sell them, or I might store them. So they go all over the place. So these, for instance, these theatre seats, I picked up at an auction a long time ago. And they're from His, Maj His Majesty's Theatre in London. And so they've got this story behind them. And then I lugged them all around the world, and then you get sick of lugging them around. And so they ended up at Donkey Bay. So it's sort of a, yeah, it's a, those trunks were the same. I found those trunks all over the world. And mm -hmm. they, um, and then other things I've found quite recently that just work all together. So it's like having a library of stuff. And then you just it just all comes together. You put it together and you think, I've got those amazing theatre seats that would work really well there. And you just place them there. They, they, and it involves a lot of placement, movement, taking things out, because you've got to get the balance right. It's all about balance and complexity. And it is all about balance. There's a lot of things going on. <laughs> Sym symmetry, it's about symmetry. It's about elegance. There's you know, so many things that you have to nail. So how did you... How did you come to understand like texture and color and warm colors and cool colors and what goes together and what because this is like an aesthetic language that most people don't understand but how did, how did you come to know it internally uh, I think I always had it when I was young uh, when I was young but I didn't have the maturity to understand it I suppose and the more design you do, that you just get better. It's like any job, you know, mm. you get better and better at it. And you make lots of mistakes along the way. You're always making mistakes. Um, fortunately, you can, some, you can correct them in design. You can see them straight away. And, and then you have that knowledge to, to be able to enhance and get better and better and better. And then you understand the, the you design. Oh, thank, thank you. You, 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 under, you, under, you start to understand depth as well and then 
the depth of design. And then recently I've discovered that you can, you know, you can hit the souls of people um, mm -hmm. by doing certain things. And then you go, you know, quite deep into design when, when you sort of figure that out. I think that seems to be the, a great insight in that with artists, if you can get really deep into their soul, um, then you're in it. And like you can help change their life and make their life happier and more full of love. Yeah, well, it's about, it's, it's what art ought to do. It ought to, art ought to hit you emotionally and it, mm. it ought to go right into your soul. And whether it's photography or whether it's painting or sculpture or design, mm. that's what it's, but well, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to touch us, in a, a, and you know, and great architecture does that. It well. does. So, like this peacock over here, like let's say that I was designing a, an amazing place like Donkey Bay, and I wanted a, a giant peacock. Mm -hmm. Where do you even find something like that? Is it an auction or? I where? got that in a in a junk shop in Auckland, of all places, and it always been. I, I, I always look out for them because they're so beautiful and the colours are so mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, but uh, they're, they're wild in northern New Zealand, so oh. that I could, if I wanted more, I could now actually get one um, because they're, a, they're actually a pest up here. Um, so farmers are shooting them, sadly, being such beautiful creatures. It's a beautiful pest. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. But then I don't think there's no such thing as a pest, but that's, I agree that's with that. another story yeah. altogether. Um, and then a taxidermist, you know, you could get a taxidermist to do it. Um, that's a that's an old one, and I prefer to buy old ones. I think it's a little bit more mm -hmm. appropriate. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and so I notice, like, out here, let's jump outside, and then we'll end up. Um, I mean, there's so many cool rooms here. We'll end we'll end in my room and then go outside. But oh, that door seems to be. So I notice you kind of have like a real like comfortable, comfy zone, like. Leisure and relaxation. I, I sense a lot of that around here. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? it don't it, it was you. It was you like you're waking up in a dream. Mm. So a dream is about comfort. It, it's yeah. about bed. It's about feeling relaxed. It's about you know that morning when you you know, wake up and you're sort of half in consciousness, half yeah. out of consciousness. That was the moment that I was trying to recreate. And that's about comfort as well. But it's also about statements um, because you get both in your dreams, you know. It's, it's that in there is, that sofa's mm. not the most comfortable thing in the world, <laughs> but it looks incredible. But then you've got comfort out here. And also I think it's good with an, an designed to have lots of different zones and mm. spaces that mm -hmm. you can go to because the light changes throughout the day, right. the temperature changes. Mm -hmm. The wind changes, so you know this might be lovely in the morning, but the courtyard's much better in the afternoon. So it's important to have all these different spaces. So what you said about like this state between dreaming and being awake—that's mm. my favorite time. It doesn't last long. It might only last like five minutes or ten minutes, yeah, but that's kind time. of like when I get some of my best ideas. Yeah. But sometimes the ideas aren't that good, right? Yeah. But sometimes, like if you have an idea and you kind of ruminate on it for a while. Maybe after 10 minutes or half an hour, an hour, you're like, that was a good idea. And you start emailing people with your idea. And if they agree it's a good idea, like, that's... But it's so strange that, like, this is such a small part of your day where you can generate great ideas. Yeah, it's, it's a tiny sort of um, shot that you get. Mm -hmm. I, I get I, so I wake up in, at 3 in the mornings mm -hmm. a lot, and, and these ideas come into, mm -hmm. come into my mind. And I write them down now because... They go, but you know, once they're in there, and you, by the time you wake up in the morning, they've gone. You can't remember them. So now I have a book by my bedside, <laughs> and I write all these things down. You and have I to write them down. I was bad to begin yeah. with, but yeah. they have actually. They, I've implemented a lot of them, and they work. So it's uh, it's quite a good sort of thing to do if if you do wake up at three in the morning with all sorts. I've of I've done things. something very similar. I try this. There's this drug called DMT, which is the active ingredient in ayahuasca. Mm. It lasts about 15 minutes. Mm. But you go into like this total dream state. Mm. And so when I come out of it, I have my laptop and I start writing down all my thoughts, everything I saw. Because it does, it does fade away like a dream. Yeah. And so it, it, it is good to write these ideas down because they do Well, it's a, it's a direct, it's a direct link to consciousness mm. and your imagination. Mm. 
So it's pure. It's, it's so pure. Before the lights of the day come on and all the distractions and the phones and everything right. starting going, you it's know, it's pure consciousness. Such a pure link to consciousness. You know. mm. So what was the impetus with the idea behind this awesome library room? Well, of course, the library was already here, and, and, and these, these shelves were here, which was so beautiful. Um, and then Antonio and I worked together, and we, we wanted to put, uh, create a gallery mm -hmm. here as well. So all his art, he, this was all his artwork, and we just put it all around the walls. And then mm -hmm. I had this idea about putting a spiral. So I've always loved these Victorian spiral staircases. It's so beautiful, and they're, they're sculptures in themselves. And so I thought it would be, it needed just a, a bit of a statement in mm -hmm. here, so the, the spiral staircase went in. Where did and that come from? We were going from? to put a big portrait of Winston Churchill above that desk that, that never eventuated, <laughs> smoking a big fat cigar. That's what he did. He, that's all he did, yeah, smoke yeah, cigars yeah, and have amazing <laughs> quotes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's a quote machine. Make incredible speeches yeah. and, and get a country through uh, a terrible time. Um, Do you have a favorite Churchill quote, by the way? If you're going through hell, just keep going and going and going because you'll That's eventually come out the other side. If you keep going. My favorite church It's very quote dogmatic. Is, but it is dogmatic. Yeah. It's very British, though. Yes, it is. Mine but is keep like, stiff up a lift about it. You know, don't tell anybody you're going through hell. Well, you must have gone through this because you were raised, obviously, in the UK. And well, yeah, you get that, you get that stiff up a lip. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just yeah. DNA sort yeah. of stuff, you know. You don't mm. you keep your emotions to yourself. Yeah, or yeah most, most people do. One self. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to anymore. No. That's kind of like the way people used to live. Now you just tell people what you think. I think yeah, I think it's a nice way to yeah. to live because nobody needs to hear about your you know. Yeah, it's this private matter. I understand. Okay, anyway, like, we digress. We digress. Uh, where did where did this come from? Uh, this where came from in, this came from India. I, I imported this from India. Yeah. Wow. And it's a particularly, I mean, the the, the detail, the way it's been done is beautiful. Yeah. It arrived in all these pieces and it had to be put together and it had lots missing from it. And it was a bit of a nightmare, but it, it was worth, you know, all the hard slog and work. And so you said it took a, a year and a half. I, I, my room is super messy. I'm sorry. This yeah. should be a clean room. Uh, the, but the initial design took about I had five months that we had to get this place up and running mm -hmm. for uh, the summer season up mm -hmm. here. So we had a very short time to get it up and running. And then there was a period after that where uh, we constantly improved, and improved, mm -hmm. improved, improved. Uh, and, and that's design. You know, you just keep going on and refining and refining and refining. And it just it goes on. And I mean, you could spend 20 years here. You know, just uh, but there are other things to do. So it's, yeah, um, it's quite a talent that you have. Um, you know, I think a, a lot of people think that when you're an artist, that one kind of talent is somehow translatable to another kind. Of like you can take photos, you can paint, or do interior design, but they're all completely different disciplines. They are very different. The only thing I've been man I've managed to cross over is garden design. Hmm. So. If you can do interior design, I, th I find you can do garden design as well because the principles are the same. And they're just rooms, really. They're just ex they're exterior rooms instead of interior rooms. Um, and more fun because you've got, you're working with nature. Na mm -hmm. Nature's dictating to you mm -hmm. as opposed to the other way around. So right. nature will tell you uh, if a plant is not going to grow or if she is, you know, if it's going to grow or if it likes it there. Or, and, and you've had much more scope with um, garden design as well. But it, the principles are the same. It is. How did you become, here, we'll go over here, we'll end over here. How did you become so, like, philosophical about these things? Do you have any philosophers you would recommend or? Well, the great Alan Watts. Alan Watts, he's a man. Start, he's, I mean, just, he's listen, dude. just listening to him mm -hmm. is, a, is a joy. Yeah. Never mind the words that come out of his mouth. Right. Um, Eckhart Tolle, I love Eckhart Tolle. I think he's a great... Um, I, I know he changed both of our lives. Yeah, he did, quite dramatically, mm -hmm. quite dramatically. Um, those would be the two, yeah, those would be the two main ones that have changed my life, I'd say. Yes, I recommend them also. Um, anyway, thank you for this beautiful creation. You're very welcome. It's, it's fantastic. You're very right? welcome. I,
I see, I see little details. I'm not sure everyone sees what I see in the details, and I bet you see even more than I see, but I want to thank you for your Oh, patronage. you're very welcome. I'm, I'm so pleased you like it. And, and yeah, it, you see a lot more. I mean, it's the sort of place that you could spend three days and just taking things in, and uh, there's a lot to take in. So, the, uh, Do you have one final insight about the creative process and how like it, it's a struggle, but in the end everything comes out okay? Um, I think if you don't push things, they just come naturally to you, mm. and and that's a life lesson. Mm. You you have to trust. You know, you have to have it's that word of faith, isn't it? You have to have faith that things will just come to you. And then when you open up those doors and have that faith, that process just life becomes very easy. Design becomes very everything mm. becomes easy because it's just presented to you. Right. You just got to find the right path to go down. You know. And I think. It's good idea to go into it with like a sense of fearlessness, without yeah, you have any to, fear in your heart. Yeah, and is and like the universe does bring the right people into your life at the right time, and the right projects into your life at the right time, and everything just tends to work out. But I think fear tends to be the enemy of that. Oh, absolutely, you have to take fear out of the equation mm -hmm. altogether, and the ego as well. Right, they both have to be completely annihilated, yeah. and that is. is easier said than done. That's a yeah. really, it's a lifetime sort of it ambition, is. I suppose. And that's another reason to read Eckhart Tolle. Yes, yeah, he, he teaches put, you how to, yeah. to to do that, and yeah. gives you the, the tools. Okay, I'll put to links that. to that book, and I'll put links to Dave stuff and everything in the links. So go read that. Go on your own exploration and. Hey, come here to Donkey Bay. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. All right, bye guys. I love bye you. Bye bye. Chapelle.